In today's episode, I want to talk about this process of adoption and how it makes me feel. I am learning so much about the process here, the things I have to get in order with my home, paperwork that's required of me, um, and most importantly, the feelings that I go through as a person embarking on this journey. So let's start off with um, the array of emotions that this brings up. So what I'm noticing is that a lot of people don't realize the process that takes place for someone to adopt a child. So there's two ways that you can go about adopting a kid. The first way is private adoption, which is something that I am also interested in. The second way is foster care and foster to adopt, something that I'm also working on. So when you go through private adoption, it is a very, very long 18 to 24 month journey that hopeful adoptive parents embark on. There is a lot of things that you have to do from documentation, making sure your home is approved, your lifestyle is approved by the state, um, and also uh, making sure that you do everything from supporting a birth mother, traveling to meet the baby or meet the mother all the way up to the birth and marketing of yourself, working with the agency, working with lawyers. There's so much that has to be done. When you go through the foster care system, there's a lot that has to be done as well. You have to get licensed to foster a child. And to do that, they require you to go through, at least the agency that I'm dealing with, there's like seven in-person classes, and then there's five online classes I have to get CPR certified, which I am doing next week. Uh, I took a water safety course through the Red Cross. Um, there is fingerprinting that I've had to do that I've done, um, which is no big deal. I did the fingerprinting when I worked in the school system. I did fingerprinting when I got my real estate license. And you have to get emergency contacts to get fingerprinted. You have to get daycare licenses. You have to get a ton of documentation together that they ask for. And once all of that's done, then you get a home study done for your home. Um, and that has to then be approved. So it's a big process, right? All of this comes with this immense amount of anxiety and what's next and you know you don't know the kid that you're going to get placed with you you give the fall at least the foster agency a an idea of like i'd like for example i told them i would like a newborn up to a year maybe a little bit older than a year that i would bring into my home and foster um and that's about it and and they could call you any day hey there's this newborn baby that's born today, come pick this baby up. Or there's a seven month old baby that we want to bring to you or want you to come pick up. You don't know. And along that route, you have to prepare for the unknown. So you have to buy clothing for babies. You have to have a car seat. You have to have the stroller. You have to do all this stuff that anyone that's having a baby does. Like when, you know, a couple is having a child, let's say a heterosexual couple is having a child, they know that they're having a newborn. They know they're, if they're gonna, well, most of the time they know if they're having male or female. You know, they, they know a lot of information and a lot of this is documented on the internet or in books or wherever or through past family experiences and their mothers and parents and things. Not as many people have been adopted or fostered or gone through that process. So there's a lot more that we already know and expect through that nine month process. And I'm not saying that those people have it, you know, any easier because there's just as many anxieties and things that are new to them. But when you're going through the foster to adopt or private adoption, 
there's a lot of things you don't know. There's a lot of waiting, a lot of waiting, a lot of waiting. And I'm finding that that is hard to do because I'm someone who wants to get everything done. I like to like, when I have a mission, I'm like, all right, let's do this. Let me cross all my T's, dot all my I's, all of that stuff. I have all my documents printed out. I've scanned them. I've emailed them to the agency. I keep a file with all the information. So everything's available and ready. That's who I am. But I also know that this process of hurrying up and waiting is probably good because when a child comes into your life, whether it's your biological child or an adoptive child, everything's different. You don't really know what is to be expected because that's a new being, that's a new life. One thing I'm finding is that Myself, and I've seen a lot of people that are in this process that I've spoken to over the last couple of weeks. They, lots of people feel really nervous about the opinions and thoughts of other people. And I'm learning that so many people have no clue what it's like to go through the process of adoption. They have no idea what it's like for people wanting to adopt. They have no idea what it's like for foster children. They have no idea what it's like for birth moms giving up their child. And a lot of people have, have opinions. So I find myself having to make sure that I daily push out any thoughts and opinions that don't serve me in this process. And that can be difficult because we're human, right? That can be hard. So when I do something like a GoFundMe campaign, trust me, I've gotten some pushback about that. But I had to go to people who have done the adopt adoption process and have use used things like GoFundMe or Adopt Together to support the cost of adoption. You know, whether you're fostering to adopt or you're doing the private adoption, Crowds, crowd uh, funding is great because that money can be used for the foster children. That money can be used for the private adoption, uh, legal fees, and, and when the baby comes and things like that. So crowdsourcing is wonderful. And one woman said to me, um, I actually saw her video on YouTube, and she said to me, you know, crowdfunding is awesome when you're going through this because... They say it takes a village to raise a kid. And this is kind of like you're building your tribe tribe of people. The people who donate $5, $15, $100, whatever they donate, it becomes your tribe. You know, they're helping you to reach your goal. And I like that thought. I like that that vantage point. But what I would say to people who probably aren't even watching this video because if you're watching this, you're probably thinking about adopting or Something like that is going on in your in your thought process. But to people who don't know about the adoption process, make sure that you listen to people that are going through this process because it's a very, very vulnerable one. You have the state going into every aspect of your life to make sure that if a child gets placed with you, whether it's through the foster care system or you're doing it in a private adoption way. You have agencies in the state that are like digging through every part of your life and it's scary. You can be a good person. You can, I don't have anything to fear. I don't fear getting my fingerprints. I don't fear them running my name. I'm not worried about them, that they're going to find anything. They're not going to find anything bad, but it's still scary because you don't always know what to expect. But one thing people can do that are, if you're not in the, the, on this process or if you know someone who is going through the adoption process, one thing that you can do is to support them, whether it's through words of support or affirmation, whether you're telling them like, great job for what you're doing or you know, congratulations for going down this journey. I've had some people say like, congratulations on your process of becoming a daddy. You know, that's really 
warm to hear. And every time someone says that, it's so nice to hear that. Or you can support through people's crowdfunding, whether it's on GoFundMe, whether it's on Adopt Together. You know, $5 helps someone's goal. You might not feel like it is going to do much, but if everyone donates $5, then you can hit a goal. So just remember that people in this process are going through something they've never experienced before, just like you may have been going through the first time you had a child. I, I, I said to the woman that is helping me with uh, this foster process, um, I said, man, since you came to my house and looked at my home and stuff, I'm in my bedroom right now, but since you came to my home and looked at everything, I felt like I went through that, like I'm in that nine month phase where it feels like the person, the woman just peed on the stick and found out she's pregnant. And now my mind is like, oh, okay, let's do this. Like I gotta work as hard as I can work, make as much money as possible. You know, you wanna make sure that you're, you're optimizing every minute of your time because you know that that baby's coming in nine months or you know that that kid might be here in two months with the foster care agency. It's like, it can be a quick turnaround with foster care. So I just tell my, like, I feel like I'm in that phase of, you know, life is about to shift in such a major way. And the most beautiful thing about it is I'm okay with that. I, I welcome that. So, and it took me a long time to get here. It took a long time and to do it by myself is something I didn't really expect, but I know that right now feels right. It feels like the time to do this. So if you are watching my journey, I, I, I see the people, the, the views of my last video going up and I really appreciate the support. If you want to, please go to gofundme.com forward slash uh, Kevin adopts and just donate anything you can because it will help me with the process of whether it's attorney fees or you know the things that I have to get together for the foster process. Um, it'll help so much, you have no idea. And I am contributing my own money into this. Don't think that I'm only trying to get people to do this for me. I have my own money that I am contributing, obviously to this process because you know this is my child. So. <laughs> Um, I don't want people to think anything malicious out of this because I do think sometimes things get taken out of context really badly. Um, but yeah, so thank you for watching today, everyone. I'm going to try and keep you guys updated on this process and where I'm at. Um, if you want to find out more about what's going on, I always make sure I update on the GoFundMe page. The link for that is in the comments. And also, if you have adopted or fostered in the past, I would love if people could um, comment below and just tell me, like give me some advice on what the process, process was like for you because um, this is a new journey and I am completely open to people's uh, advice and support as I go through this process. It's exciting, I'm, I'm thrilled and I feel blessed to to be on this journey so that's it thanks for watching and uh we'll talk with you guys again soon yeah we'll do it soon <laughs>